All right, welcome back to How to Build an F-14 Tomcat. Sunday afternoon episode number two. So uh, all the two ounce cloth is laid down. I've got three layers of six ounce cloth down on the uh, both the stab and the rudder, and I'm actually putting the fourth coat or fourth layer of six ounce fiberglass cloth onto the rudder right now. So basically it's just the exact same thing as with the two ounce cloth. The six ounce is a little bit lighter weave cloth than the two ounce I used. The two ounce is, uh, is what they call style 2113, which basically just denotes what type of weave pattern and how tight the, uh, the thread, the individual threads are to each other. And the reason why I went with a really tight weave on the two ounce is it's just less, uh, less room for it to sink down into the surface coat, so you have less chance of it um, of the fabric printing through to the surface coat as it as it cures. The six ounce, you don't have to worry about that quite so much since you've got those four layers of two ounce cloth blocking it and keeping it from doing that. Again, like I said in the previous video, I'm doing a, a balanced layup as they call it, which just equal numbers of or equal amount of uh, cloth laminates at the same orientations so basically with the two ounce I went a two ounce cloth layer and I did the width of the roll parallel to the trailing edge of the rudder and the trailing edge of the horizontal sta stabilizer then I did 45 degrees of that off of that so instead of it being parallel with the trailing edge it now was kind of 45 degrees to it. Then the third layer was 90 degrees to the trailing edge again, or parallel to the trailing edge. And then the fourth layer was 45 degrees to the trailing edge. And what that does, it just kind of orients the cloth fiber so you get strength in, diff in all the directions of the, the mold. So when they start expanding or contracting or anything, they all expand and contract the same direction, equal amounts. That way, it doesn't start to warp. It takes a little bit longer to uh, to get your fabric cut out to do that because you have to pay attention to how you do it and you have to be pretty accurate on how you cut it. But once you get it done, it, it runs pretty quickly. Once I get that fabric cutting table built up, it'll be a lot easier. What I did uh, to get it cut is what I do is I, on the, the tabletop and since I don't have the table, I just used a scrap piece of this, or use the other parting plane board, and I just drew basically a big triangle on it. And after that triangle, I put the 45 degree dimension right down the middle of it. And then you just kind of orient the width, or the, the long end of your cloth, or the width of your cloth on that triangle, and cut out your part size. And this will be the fourth layer of six ounce cloth on the horizontal stabilizer. What I'll do is after this is uh, this layer of cloth is put down, I'll go and I'll start cutting up the next uh, the next layers of the of the mold cloth. That way I'll let this stuff cure for I don't know for about an hour or two, and then I'll come back and put that the last oh probably five or six layers of cloth down over the mold. Again, it's just kind of, once you get to this point, it's just a whole lot of the wash, rinse, repeat syndrome where you just do the same thing over and over and over. I've uh, 
This is my third or fourth cup of resin. I've been mixing it at 100 to 150 gram, 100 to 100, about 125 grams total of resin. I've almost gone through a quarter of a gallon so far. So I mean, one cup did basically three, three layers of two ounce cloth. So that stuff doesn't soak up a whole lot, but the six ounce soaks up a lot in a hurry. And the 16 and 17 and 20 ounce stuff I have is going to soak up a, a whole lot in a hurry. If you're wondering how you come about figuring how, what layers you want, what orientation, and if you're going to get print through on your parts or not, the easiest way to do it is just do a couple of those test layups. It's, a, it's kind of a waste of material because you're not really getting anything out of it, but you're learning a whole lot more than you think you are, than you think you're getting, because you get to learn how strong your mold's going to be, how much work time you get out of a cup of resin. Granted, you're probably going to be mixed up a lot smaller portions than what you would for the test layup than you would a full layup like this but you're gonna you'll know that if you do oh like on my test layups I only did three layers of two ounce three layers of six ounce and then uh, I believe it was four layers of 17 and a half ounce just by doing that and then I did that layer of uh, six millimeter Depron with another layer of 17 and a half ounce over that when I first took those parts off of the uh, the mold surface, I was really not impressed by the Depron because you could just you could just basically you could compress the Depron foam like it was it had no fiberglass over it. But after letting that sit for about a, about three weeks, you can't you can't press that Depron in at all. That fiberglass covering over it's just hardened that much. But it let me know that the Depron laminate that I put in there really didn't do anything but add weight because it didn't really soak up any resin. If it would have soaked up resin, it would have stiffened up a little bit and you wouldn't have been able to compress it. So you learn little things like that from the process of doing test layups. And you also learn that if you're gonna get fabric print through or not, which is the biggest thing, because if you get print through the fabric, that print through is gonna go, if you get it to print right through the, to the mold surface, that's going to show up in every part you pull. So you're either going to have to throw your molds away and make new ones with a lighter weight cloth initially, or you're going to have to do a lot of body work to get rid of that print through in every part you ever pull from it. I also got a couple little, one big tool, I got a couple more to purchase for when I get ready to lay up the, uh, the fuselage, they're called bubble busters. And depending on what style and what size you get, they can go anywhere from five or six bucks all the way up to 30 or 40 bucks a pop. But basically it's just a paint roller with a bunch of different shaped, uh, like aluminum or plastic or whatnot shapes at the end of uh, a handle. And it lets you roll over the surface of it and it does what it, exactly you think it does by the name. It busts bubbles out of it, out of your uh, your laminates. So I've got that for doing big stuff like the wings and and the fuselage, flaps, really big. Uh, well, I guess you could call this kind of big too, but for just doing stuff like that. And I've actually used it a couple of times on this to uh, to just kind of help get rid of a couple of small air bubbles that have popped up.
I showed you guys that big stack of fiberglass cloth earlier and you're probably thinking hey it's all gone no there's still half of it there the reason I did half of it is I went ahead and cut all of the the cloth that I was gonna need for both sides of these molds at the same time that way I know they're all all the cloth is laminate or is uh, all the the fibers are oriented the same direction again that goes to that whole balanced layup thing but even those are these are my first really big set of molds that are just going to keep getting bigger as I go on with this project I've done a lot of research and I've helped a couple of guys at work do some of this stuff and I've actually done some vacuum bagging before on a couple of other airplanes and other places I've worked at so I've got a fairly good understanding of this stuff but composites are about like sheet metal and electricity you can learn about as much as you want and think you know what you're talking about and then something else comes out and just completely changes everything you're always learning I'm just taking a squeegee now and making sure I got all this cloth here at the top laid down really nice and make sure it's fully wetted out All right, so that concludes the second video so far of today. Um, the next one, I'll get on here and show you guys uh, putting down the really thick fiberglass cloth. Again, I mean, it's just the same old, same old wash, rinse, repeat, so there's not a whole lot to it, but I'll let you guys get it involved with the process so uh until that time i'm gonna go find something to eat since it's now way past lunchtime and uh we'll see you guys in that video have a good one